So hi everyone, it's Karen Williams here, the book mentor, and today I'm delighted to be interviewing Louise Harrington, who is the singing accountant. Now Louise was introduced to me earlier this year through a mutual contact, and at the time she started her book and she had loads of blogs, loads of materials, years worth of information, and she started working with my team and I to help her to turn it into a book and to get it published. Now her book is this one, it is the Singing Accountant's Guide to Tax and Accounts, and I'm sure you'll find out throughout this interview, Louise has got a wicked sense of humour and her subtitle, Everything a Performer Needs to Know to Keep the Tax Man Happy, I think encompasses all of that. So thanks, Louise, for joining me. Thanks for being here today. No problem, Karen. Sorry about the cold. <laughs> That's all right. I think we're both a bit nasally, so I'll try not to cough through this as well. <laughs> so, Louise, tell us a little bit more about your new book and what inspired you to write it. OK, well, the book, as you rightly said, it's Everything a Performer Needs to Know. Um, I am a chartered accountant, oh, title. Um, but I specialise in tax and accounts for performers, so musicians, actors, dancers. And what I found a lot of the time was people would come to me a couple of years out of college and say they don't know what they're supposed to be doing, they didn't know they had to register with HMRC, mm -hmm. be self-employed, they complained it wasn't taught at college, etc. So I thought I'm answering the same questions all the time. I know people don't like to research too much online. So I thought if I pulled it all together in a blog, um, sorry, in a book, then I could then pass that on to either the music colleges or the individual students to say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do rather than letting them go off and mm -hmm. dig around the internet and find the wrong answers to actually then go through the book. And it takes you through a logical step of how you set up with HMRC. So mm -hmm. it was written specifically for my niche market, mm -hmm. but you know, technically anyone could pick it up and sort of say, this is how you set up as self-employed. So mm -hmm. that was what inspired me. It was my client base to say, they don't know what they're doing. Fantastic. And what, have been your, what would you say have been your biggest challenges um, on the book writing journey? My biggest challenge is I am dyslexic. So people get a bit worried, dyslexic accountant. <laughs> uh, but if things don't add up to zero at the end or divide by nine, you know you've gone wrong. So the challenge really for me was actually writing, sitting mm -hmm. down and writing it to try and not make it so dull and boring that I'm an accountant teaching this. And it's quite hard because I, I can't proofread my own work. I don't know mm -hmm. if anyone can, no. but I will read what I think is there, not what is actually there. So that has been one of my hardest challenges and it takes me ages to read a book. Mm. yeah I do remember when we were, we were going through the editing stage of things it just took a little bit longer because and, and that's why you need a great proofreader like um, you know we've had obviously you've had with your book because it, and I find it myself you do get word blind to what you've written yourself and you you don't see what you see what you think you're going to see rather than what you do see yeah it's like I'm a year behind my women's weekly magazines so that's how slow a reader I am <laughs> so how did working with my team and I help you to get your book out there and get it actually in down on print um most of the time it is the edit process because i can't read my own stuff um to me the fact that it should be a semicolon and not a colon it makes no difference to me i'm somebody that failed english o level three times so it's like it's not that a greater deal but i know obviously it matters to the readers because if the grammar and all that type of thing doesn't scan well isn't correct then what trust do they have in you that what you mm. put in your book is correct mm -hmm. so it's great actually having somebody that can go through all that and do it without me having to read through it because you, know, you start to go word blind and everything mm. especially with things like track changes and you just see the sea of red and you think oh I can't deal with it mm. so, and then with the design side you know I dump it all on a piece of paper in word and that'll do for me uh, so it's actually thinking about again how it looks to the reader so it's in easy chunks rather than just sort of a huge long essay that one would have written at school when mm. well at my age you know we did write lots of essays at school uh, I did as well I think what I love about your book as well Louise is Sam who designed it sort of broke it down into easy to read chunks and probably a lot of your readers might struggle in that area as well because they are actors they're performers they're singers they're not necessarily you know normally going to pick up a book and read it and actually it breaks it into I know you've got all the screenshots from HMRC which has been a little bit of a pain in itself but also <laughs> it helps people to see how everything's step by step and it's not just text and I think that's yeah. really important. 
yeah so you know hopefully with checklists in there that you guys came up with to say why don't you put a checklist in mm. um, the myths and stories that help break it all up so when people turn around and say oh but that's what I thought and you think well that's not quite correct though is it yeah yeah well sometimes you don't know what you don't know as you probably found that with the book and I think that happens with a lot of things in life doesn't it we just don't know you know we're not going to know everything are we no and even sometimes you know people can come to me and think well I don't know that so you know so that's that's the the impact that it has on having a good design and a good copyright yeah but it's about playing to your strengths because you know um, I'm a writer and numbers are not my strong point and I do I tend to get number blind if nothing else and actually you know although I'm a limited company not a sole trader I learned so much from reading your book I didn't know that and actually <laughs> even though it's aimed towards performers in terms of what they can claim what they can't claim some of which won't be relevant to people like me I still learn a huge amount from the book and work I always learn from clients but I learned a huge amount from the book and yeah that helped as well cool Good, I'm Good. glad. <laughs> company to come later. <laughs> I know, I know. I was going to mention that. I know you've got one for back of house people, for sole traders, and you've got the limited company one, which basically just goes into this in a little bit more detail, which I think is great because certainly when I went from a sole trader to a limited company, it was a bit like rabbit in the headlights because that's not my thing, which is why I've got an accountant to help. We all need an accountant to do that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, dear. So I know your book has only been out a couple of months. We're December, we're oh no, almost December now, and it came out in October. What would you say have been your biggest successes so far with your book? Well, with it, it kind of opens doors slightly, which was part of the attention as well, in that I can send it off to the drama colleges or the music colleges and present it to them to say, this is the type of thing your people should be taught. Mm -hmm. Why don't I come in and do a presentation for you for the hour and a half, etc.? Mm -hmm. But it also then opens doors that the students might buy it. Mm -hmm. So it, it does open doors from there. It gives you some credibility in the marketplace when people just search for you and then you see it popping mm -hmm. up on um, on very popular book websites. <laughs> Not naming any at all. <laughs> and I know you've had a couple of really um, exciting meetings over the last few weeks as well, haven't you, yeah. to get it in front of thousands of people. That's right. Equity, um, like the tax and benefits office, like the book. Unfortunately, as a union, they can't actively promote it, but they know it's there. So mm -hmm. I have to work with that now. Um, and also with East Age, they want me to, I know we're jumping ahead, they want to co-author a book with me to deal with the backstage people. So the crew, the lighting designers, mm -hmm. the producers of stage musicals and films, etc. Mm -hmm. So they want to have a much more technical centric one. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay. So, so it does start to open doors because you then have a bit more credibility in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And do you go for somebody that might just set up to say, I deal with musicians, or would you rather have somebody that actually has things published and read? Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, you are a, a, a singer, an opera singer as well, aren't you, Louise? So you, you know what it's like to be on, in, you know, on the floor, actually... <laughs> doing it <laughs> How else could I, put, I could put it so much better than that couldn't I but you know, you know what it's like to be there actually you know doing it yourself without the accountant's background as well it probably would have been much more difficult for you that's right so it's um sitting in the green room for a show you sit there and everyone's sort of looking at doing their tax returns and just filling any numbers in it's like but they don't understand why they're doing things or what they should be keeping yeah. So the constant questions you get, hence the reason, stick it all in one book and you can research it from there. Mm. Well, nobody teaches you. You know, when I went into business and I knew I was setting up a business, which is slightly different to some of your performers, you know, even I, you know, struggled to know what to do first. And it's, it's always a learning curve. Every, every step you take, you know, is a learning curve to what new things you have to do or not do. Yeah. So hopefully this will take you through the very logical process of, mm are you going to be self-employed or are you really employed setting up with hmrc how to keep your bookkeeping records what you need to keep all the way through to when you do your tax return late what happens with penalties and things like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it doesn't actually take you through the detailed nitty-gritty of doing your tax return after that's all that's why they need to come to you isn't it louise precisely you know <laughs> <laughs> It's giving people enough information for them to do a lot of it themselves, but also know when they need help and support. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what would you say has been the biggest impact so far that your book has had on you, your business and other people? Um, the, bus the 
best impact at the moment is the name is getting out there mm. now i always thought the singing accountant was a bit oof, okay great it's a bit like tv series the singing detective it's like does it really mean anything but it's now it seems to be catching on a bit more so you think okay so that has have had an impact with that that people then know if you're in the business and have been around a little while then you know what i do exactly mm -hmm. from yeah. just that kind of name so uh, it's something I've kind of avoided, but you think, ah, uh, it's a good name, let's go for it. So I think the biggest impact is that, and you are known about when people start to search in well-known um, online bookstores and search criteria. I'm still mm -hmm. not mentioning any names. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think the other thing is that people may forget your actual name, but they don't forget the singing accountant. So That's even right. if they can't remain, remember your name, Louise Harrington, they know to search for the singing accountant. I find that myself. People search for the book lady or the book mentor rather than my name if they can't remember who I am. So it helps you to become memorable. That's right. And it's something that will stick out on sort of a brochure or whatever to yeah. say, here you go. Yeah, no, exactly. So what would, advice would you give to other authors either thinking about writing a book or maybe they've already started? Know your material and not have to sit there and research it for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. You know, it makes it much easier to write. And my view, which I don't know whether it goes down well with an editor, is that I will use a um, dictation type service. Mm -hmm. So, because I will speak a lot faster than what I think about typing with my fingers and then having to correct the spelling. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's the easier way I found of actually writing my book was using sort of um, it's not transposition translation services mm -hmm. no, that's the wrong word and so tran transposition no that's not the right word either so I know what you mean did you use yeah. web did you use web.com Louise <laughs> yes I do but I wasn't going to mention it <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a useful resource for people I'm on the group mastermind that we've been running since September it's one of the things that came up because some people are natural speakers not writers yeah. and yes it's more difficult to edit it because it doesn't always translate everything properly from voice to word but actually if it makes it easier for you it can be changed it can be updated later Yes, so that's what I found a, a huge help is Rev.com. I know Apple does their own kind of voice recognition if yeah. you want to say Apple. Apple. Yeah. Um, I found that really useful and also reading back because it's transcribed by a person mm -hmm. and not a machine. Yeah. I then realise how bad my speaking was. <laughs> <laughs> when you start most sentences with so or now or right then, I think that's not going to go down well in a book. <laughs> Uh, that, that does just remind me of um, whenever I write my own books is my, my, our editor, um, another Louise, she always picks me up and so there was always a phrase that I repeat again and again and again. And it's always something different every book as well. <laughs> so that is quite interesting. You kind of find out a bit more about yourself and how you speak and potentially come across to others. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I think it's about finding the right way to, for you, isn't it? I think doing it that way worked for you and it works for many other people's as other people as well. So, okay. Any other pieces of advice you'd like to give or like to share? Um, that's the main bit and not to get frustrated over times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, cause I thought oh, I've written the book, you know, a couple of weeks later it'll be out on print, you mm -hmm. know? So I didn't, I didn't appreciate the length of time it can take from, okay, I think I've written the book. Mm -hmm. through to actually no here it is here is a printed copy of it mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think people underestimate how much time it takes for the editing side of things because there's a lot of people involved there's a lot of backwards and forwards that go on at that stage to actually make it you know polish it and make it the best it can be yeah and um, I want those people to say here it is just get on with it produce it and be done yeah you know yeah. I'm not very good at faffing about here and there and you know things like that hence the reason why the other Louise sort of ended up doing most of the, the edit on her own in terms of is there a full stop here or is there an apostrophe missing? She's the expert, you know, she's, I, grammar's not my strong point either, Louise, so <laughs> she is the expert when it comes to things like that and I'll bow to her experience. Yeah, it's like, Tom, it's semi -colon. yeah, all of that. <laughs> Should there be an apostrophe? I'm really not sure, doesn't look right, but okay. Yeah. I think that's what it's all about playing to our own strengths, isn't it? You know, you yeah. are an expert in the accountancy field. You're not, you don't need to be an expert in writing it. It's just about taking your knowledge out of your head onto paper and then yeah. getting help to, you know, to 
translate it into something that's readable, isn't it, really? I know yeah. two and two equals 22, you know, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. So how can people find out a little bit more about you and your book, Louise? Well, you can find out a bit more about the book if you just want to put into a search criteria the singing accountant and it will pop up. I have tested this a few times. Wonderful. Um, or via my website, there's actually a link that takes you through, um, I think it's under books and training courses. Mm -hmm. So that takes you to um, a page all about the book. Mm -hmm. um, and what's your website address, Louise? My website is www.performanceaccountancy.co.uk. Okay, fabulous. And that might sound a bit strange given we're calling it the singing accountant, but I haven't built the singing accountant website yet. Yet, to be, to be done, eh? Yeah, to be done. <laughs> But because there'll be a series of books, I need to design the singing accountants.co.uk and I've also got to design the singing accountants guide.co.uk. But eventually that will come on. But at the moment it's all at performanceaccountancy.co.uk. And you've got a series of online programmes, haven't you, that I believe you're developing. Um, yep, I'm developing a whole pile of training courses yep. which will take people through their tax return. Brilliant. So if you've read the book, you've got everything ready, and then once you want to know how to do your tax return, mm -hmm. then the training courses will take you through each section of the tax return that are the most common. So okay. there are things I won't go through, like EIS deductions and things like that, but things like employment, self-employment, property, yeah. that will all be covered in the training courses. Fantastic. Wonderful. And then obviously think about the limited company book that will come hopefully next year and the um, technical one. Brilliant. Fantastic. And obviously your book can be found on that Amazon. I know we haven't mentioned it. Amazon and all good bookstores out there. You can find yep. Louise's book. So the yep. singing accountant's guide to tax and accounts. <laughs> so Louise, have you got anything that you want to add? Yeah, I have already showed it. But I know you've been having a few issues with our Zoom link today, so you can't see me at the moment. So, um, <laughs> so this is a really, really great book. I'm just going to show a few pages. You've got the diagram. That's a really lovely diagram to show you what to do um checklist pictures brilliantly done so um yeah thank you very much louise thanks for sharing oh. that with us today and go and get her book <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> thanks karen thank you